In today's video, we're talking about Filmic Pro, and I wanna share with you 10 settings and tips that'll help you get cinematic video to get that film look right on your iPhone or Android device. But let's jump into these 10 tips and settings. All right, so here we are outside. Uh, I've got my iPhone set up, just looking at this clock tower here. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you those 10 settings and tips to get this looking cinematic. So the first thing I would do is go and change my aspect ratio. So in order to do that, I'm gonna open up my settings, resolution, and here you can change your aspect ratio. Now, I want to get the cinematic black bars on my video. So I'm gonna change it to 2.39.1. And as you can see, those black bars appear. I'll switch back to 16 by 9, 2.39 by 1. You have those black bars on your videos. Now, look at this picture. It already looks cinematic just by throwing those black bars there. And we haven't even gotten into the rest of the tips yet. So adding those black bars, it's going to make it look a lot more cinematic. Uh, tip number two is you're going to need to change your frame rate. So if we go into settings again and click on frame rate, Right now we are on 30 frames per second, which is the standard. Uh, your phone will just film on it naturally. Uh, but for the film look, you're going to want to go into 24 frames per second. Or you're going to want to choose something above 120 frames per second, which anything above 60 gets into the realm of slow motion. So 120 frames and 240 frames per second is slow motion. So if you film in slow motion, or if you film in 24 frames per second, it's gonna give you a nice, uh, very good movie look for your videos. So tip number three and number four is to fix our shutter speed and our ISO. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that circle in the bottom left, and that's gonna open up the controls for this. So on the top, is which I'll click on, is the ISO, and then the bottom is the shutter speed. So what we wanna do, normally a good rule of thumb is when controlling your shutter speed, you want it to be double the amount of your frame rate. So if we're filming in 24 frames per second, we wanna double that and have our shutter speed at 1 48th. And if you're shooting 30 frames per second, you'd want it to be at 1 slash 60. As you can see, we're at 1 slash 2304. That is way too high. And so what that's going to do is it's not going to cause any blur. Everything is going to be uh, very focused, which is what gives smartphone video that really weird type look that we're not used to. So what we want to do, we want to get that shutter speed down as low as possible. But as you'll notice, if we try to bring that to 148, it's way overexposed. So in order to fix that, what I would highly recommend is picking up a ND filter. What I have here is this really big ND filter. You can actually pick this up at moment. It's an attachment for my phone in order to attach a 62 millimeter ND filter. If you go on Amazon, they have some cheap ones you can click on, uh, clip onto your phone for like 20 bucks. Uh, but I have this attachment just because it makes it a little easier. It's heavy metal design. It just slides right into my phone. So I'm going to attach that right now. There we go. Got that attached. Let me adjust this a little so you can see it there. Now what this, now look at it. Now we, instead of having that really bright scene at 1 slash 48, the ND filter is basically like sunglasses for your phone and has darkened my scene here. So now I can shoot at 148 for shutter speed, which is going to give like when cars pass by, when there's movement in your scene, it's going to give it that nice cinematic blur. And then it also allows us to keep our ISO down really low, uh, which ISO, uh, the best way I can describe it is it's basically digital brightness. So the higher up your ISO is, the more green you're going to see in your uh, darker images and whatnot. So you want to try and keep your ISO as low as possible and you won't have those weird blurry things in the dark scenes that you'll normally see in video. So keeping that as low as possible is always good. So 22 is the lowest we can go and that's where we want to leave it. So tip number five is to make sure that this stays locked. You don't want your exposure and your shutter speed to be in auto mode. And you'll know it's locked when you see the red circle as well as the red 
uh, square, which is also locking the focus. So when you have that, your settings aren't going to change as you move the camera around. And that's what you want. You want things to be in manual mode. Which brings us to tip number six, which is to lock the color balance. So if you click on the bottom left and click on those colors, this is going to open up your color balance. And what we want to do is there are some presets you can select here depending on your situation. Uh, we're right now in partly cloudy. So if I select cloudy, it's going to lock it with that. Uh, you could also click and uh, customize it if you want, make it warmer, colder, add a, the pink or green tint to it. Uh, but I think, well, I'm actually going to stick with sunny. I like how the color temperature looks for sunny. And now that I've selected that preset, it is locked on that preset. Locking that color balance is going to help your video look a lot more professional because, again, when things are in manual, they stay the same, and it's not this crazy exposure change uh, and color change that you're going to see. Now, once all those settings are locked, the next thing I want to do is shoot in a flat profile. So, again, if you click on those color settings and then go down one, as you can see, I already have it on flat. Um, this is what natural would have looked like. And this is what flat looks like. Basically flat, what it does is it tries to get as much detail as possible out of the image. So that way when you color grade it, if you want, you can make it darker or brighter or whatnot. Log version 2 does that as well, but uh, personally I like the flat profile. Uh, I just like the image it produces in Filmic Pro. Tip number eight is to follow the rule of thirds. Now we're getting into more of the tips for when filming with Filmic Pro. Um, as you can see, I have this three by three grid. Uh, you can kind of see it there on the image. Uh, the three by three grid helps you align your image to give you a very professional look. And I talk about the rule of thirds all the time on this channel. So what you want to do is you can see where the lines intersect, those four points you want your subject to line up with that. You'll see this all the time in professional movies. You know, there's nothing wrong with centered, but by following the rule of thirds, and I'm just gonna move this tripod over a bit, it's gonna give your, it, it just makes your image look a lot more pleasing. Tip number nine is to do slow pans and movement. So whenever there is panning and movement with your phone, and it's steady and it's smooth, it's gonna look cinematic. Having any kind of motion in your shot is gonna make it look better instead of just, I mean, if you really wanted a shot that didn't have movement, you could just take a photo. So having movement within your shot really makes your footage look cinematic. And then finally, tip number 10 is to look for symmetry and patterns. Now I found a few images online where it demonstrates some symmetry. Symmetry is more of balance. So bridges have balances, uh, staircases, you can sometimes find balance. You know, getting those types of balance shot, they just look nice and pleasing to the eye. And the same is with uh, patterns. When you find patterns, whether it's like railing or anything else, you know, finding those patterns, our eyes like patterns. So keeping an eye out for those when you're filming, it's gonna help give you a very nice look to your videos. If any of these tips helped you out, please give this video a like and go check out our playlist on cinematic filmmaking. It should be over here somewhere. And so that way you get all the knowledge so you can create awesome content on nothing but your smartphone. We'll see you in the next video.